Conservatives, have you gotten sick of it yet? Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of A Fresh Perspective with Jeff Charles, where we prefer truth over narrative and principles over politics. And today, we're going to dive into a topic that's probably going to hit home for many of you. Uh, but before I get into it, you know what to do. You got to like this. You got to share this. And you also have to describe. There's, it's, it's the law now. They passed a law in Congress that President Joe Biden didn't know he was signing into law, but he signed it into law. And it says that everybody is required to subscribe to A Fresh Perspective with Jeff Charles and to follow me on X and to, and to support my work. Also at my Substack, the law says that you have to check out my Substack, which is called Chasing Liberty. You can access that at liberty, libertychasers.com, libertychasers.com. Now, I don't want you to run afoul of the law. I don't want the police to come up to your house and arrest you for not following it. So I would recommend that you do that right now. Become a subscriber, become a paid subscriber, support me. I appreciate it. And you will stay out of jail. You're, you're welcome. You're, you're welcome. I, I know. I know. Anyway, now that I got that out the way, um, I want to talk about something that I posted on X a few days ago. And I thought I'd do a little video about this. And it's kind of about the whole political climate that we're in right now. This message is really for actual conservatives. I don't mean people who just say they're conservatives or they maybe have some conservative leanings. That's fine. No problem with you. But this really is directed towards conservatives who actually want to shrink the government. If the idea of abolishing the Department of Education, the ATF, the FBI, and like almost all federal agencies, if that makes you get goosebumps, you're the person I'm talking to right now. Now, here's the thing. If you are an authentic conservative, maybe you vote Republican. Maybe you don't vote at all. I understand that maybe you don't want as little government as I do. We may not agree on that, and that's fine. But if you're a conservative who's fed up with the Republican Party, that's what I'm going to be talking about right now. Uh, and how and, and what you can really do about it at this point, especially if you're paying a lot of attention to national politics and the federal government, all that jazz. So let's face it. Let's face the music. There's an election coming up in just a couple months here, and it's shaping up to be yet another disheartening spectacle for those of us who genuinely value limited limited government principles, um, whether you're voting for Trump as kind of like a stopgap to keep Kamala from getting an office, or you're just hoping that he does what he says he's going to do. I mean, if you're an actual conservative, there's a lot to be mad at Trump about. Um, and, and But if you're voting for him, I understand why. I, I totally get it. Um, what I'm going to get to in a second is why, you know, it doesn't really matter as much. Because even if Trump were as conservative as you are, he can't fix the federal government alone. You need more people in office. The Republican Party is the one that's that says that they want to limit the government, but they're just kidding. Every time they say that, they've got their fingers crossed behind their backs. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. And here's the thing. A lot of folks on the right or who vote Republican, they laugh at libertarians. And I get why. There's a lot to laugh at with, with, with my, uh, my libertarian brothers and sisters and the party in general. Because you guys don't win. And I'm, I'm going to lose in this election. Whether Kamala wins or whether Trump wins. I lose. And so I understand you guys laugh at us. Oh, you go, you never win anything at the federal level. Well, guess what? <laughs> Welcome to the club because you are in the exact sinking ship that I am in. If you're voting for a Republican and you're an authentic conservative, you're not winning either. <laughs> if Trump wins, you're not, gonna, that, that, you're not going to win. The Republican Party, despite all of its rhetoric and despite, despite all their, their declarations of how much that they want to shrink the government, do they really represent what you want? Do these people represent you? Come on, you know they don't. I hear you complain about it all the time, and rightly so. You should be complaining about it. They always run on a more libertarian platform, and once they get into office, they govern like diet Democrats. They pay lip service to the ideas of limited government, while all, all the same, while working to expand the state's reach and to, and to expand the power of the government. When was the last time Republicans actually shrunk the government in a meaningful way? Yeah, they cut some taxes here and there, look up some regulations. At one point, they 
finally managed to balance the budget. But did they get rid of any agencies? Did they actually shrink the size of the government? No. And here's the thing. I, he I see a lot of you railing against rhinos, quote unquote rhinos, who dominate your party. Again, rightly so. But here is the uncomfortable truth. If you are a person that actually wants a smaller government, you are the rhino. The Republican Party is doing what it's always done. It's never really been about limiting the government. Yes, there have been individuals who actually wanted that in the Republican Party or in, in positions of power, but not nearly enough of them. Here's the thing. You are a political minority, just like I am. Because a lot of these people that you call rhinos, the, 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 these moderates or people who are more, more Republicans, they get voted in. People are voting for them in the primaries, they're voting for them in the general election, and they're not voting for the kind of people that would represent you. But they do represent a lot of the other people who are actually voting for them. So the, the bottom line is that most Americans do not share your passion for shrinking the government. So if you're truly a limited government conservative, I hate to break it to you, but you already know it anyway, you are a political minority just like me. The GOP isn't your home, and it's certainly not going to deliver the government that you want. So at this point, you're probably thinking, okay, well, nice speech, Jeff, but what the hell are we supposed to do about it? Well, here's what I think should happen. The federal government, for all intents and purposes, is gone. It is hopelessly corrupt. It's not going to be changing anytime soon. Again, even if you get some people in there who do reflect your values, there's not going to be enough of them that are actually going to root out the corruption, no matter how badly they want to. And the reality is that most of them don't. Most of them really don't. They're in it for power or to push their agenda or what have you. The answer is what I've been preaching for years, focusing on your local communities. Um, there are a lot of libertarians who are focused on this. I am. And there are also conservatives who are as well, but you need, but we need more. National elections are basically a lost cause for those who want real change. When I say real change, I mean getting the government more out of your life. But it's the local government that's the most important anyway. That has more of a direct impact on your life. And it's there that you can actually make a difference. Your voice matters more in your city, in your town, in your county than it will ever matter in Washington. Focusing on your local and state level politics is a much better a much better uh, approach to this, and I'm going to explain why. You need people in office at your local level who will be willing to tell the, the federal and state governments to go F themselves when they want to, to, to overreach their, their power or abuse their authority. This has already happened. This has already happened. Remember during COVID-19 when you had sheriffs in places like Arizona, even California, and other states who said, okay, you passed these lockdown mandates, you're talking about masks, guess what? I'm not gonna enforce that. That's what you need. In Illinois, I bring this up all the time, they passed that assault weapons ban and over half of the state's sheriffs said, okay, great, you passed that, but that's a violation of the second amendment and we are not going to enforce that tyrannical bull crap. Now, imagine what would happen if it wasn't just the sheriffs. What if your mayor had that attitude? What if your city council did? What if people in other positions of power had that attitude? If the state or federal government wants to get froggy, if they, if they want to pass a law that they know is unconstitutional, we're just not going to go along with it. It's called nullification. I won't get too much into that word. That'll be something I talk about later. Um, you can actually check out my, on my YouTube channel. I talked to a guy named Mike Decentralized. We talked all about nullification. But at this point, if we're going to have liberty, this is our best bet, at least for now. When that starts to actually happen, that's when you can start bubbling up to the other levels of government. But you got to be able to hold your local government accountable. The federal government might be a lost cause, but your local government doesn't necessarily have to be. You got to get people in there who actually want to get the corruption out because you're, we always talk about the deep state and we think about Washington. You have the deep state right in your backyard and it's your local government. I guarantee you that there is some corrupt shit going on if you just look hard enough. You might not even have to look all that hard. Just look up local news reports and you'll see what's going on. But this is the only chance that we have. If you already live in a community that maybe can be turned into something like this, 
to, to where it can be a community where they, the government leaves you alone as much as possible, then do that, fight for it. Or if you want, you can move to a community that's already closer to what, to what you want to have happen. Uh, that's what Donnie and I did. We moved out here to rural Louisiana. We've got like one or two police officers in the whole town. It, it, it's awesome. People just, I mean, the, the government doesn't get too intrusive. Now, I'm sure that there's a lot of things that I'm probably going to have a problem with. But in general, like it's, it's, it's not much of an issue. People have the same attitude here. They just want to be left alone. They want to be involved in their communities. They want to raise their families, hang out with, hang out with their friends, all that good stuff without all of the noise, without the government always saying, you know, let's see how we can regulate that or tell you what to do here and tell you what you can't do here. Rural areas are, are good for that. But I mean, it, it may even be possible to change some suburban areas, maybe even some cities. But at this point, this is the last chance or the only chance that we're going to have for liberty because we're never going to change the federal government as it stands today, right now. You have to start working local can run for office, or you can support somebody who is, or you can find other ways to benefit your community. That's the, the environment that's right around you is what you have the most control over. So to me, if you want an actual conservative type of lifestyle or conservative type of governance, you got to start with your local areas first, get people who will not allow other levels of government to intrude on you. Then you start expanding that. And there's a lot, there's a lot of people even moving to certain areas for that purpose because they see a community that 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 could be one that that embodies the values that they want. It's already happening. I mean, we, we always talk about national divorce, right? Um, it's already happening, really. I mean, you've got people moving from red areas to blue areas. You've got even more people moving from blue areas to red areas. And there are red areas in every state in this country. I don't get if you're in California, there are red areas in California, believe it or not. So to me, this is what's going to have to happen. Because if you don't want governments infringing on you, this is what you have to do. You have to have people who will stand as a bulwark against that. You need the right people in your mayor's seats and your city council and your sheriff's office, judges, all of that. I'm dog catcher. You need somebody who's going to push back. You're going to need people who are willing to push back against what other government officials want to do. It's the only way that this is going to work. So I just kind of wanted to throw that out there because it was, it was kind of on my mind. And, you know, I think a lot of people, regardless of how this election turns out, there's going to be a lot of disappointment to go around. And I know that, again, authentic conservatives are really fed up with a lot, a lot of this stuff. Their party, your party doesn't represent you. The Republican Party treats actual conservatives the same way Democrats treat black people. They know they don't have to do what you want. They, they know that they don't have to represent your values because they know you're going to vote for them anyway, no matter what. Something has to change. And what I'm, what I'm outlining here is a start. And I've already done a lot of content on this, and I'll be doing even more. Um, hopefully, I'll be interviewing some awesome people on my podcast soon who can kind of expand on this idea, but I kind of just wanted to throw it out there to you guys and, and see what you thought. So let me know, let me know in the comments, hit me up, but until next time, catch you on the flip side.